myself so you'll have to pardon me for some of the glitches which will appear but I think by filming it myself I can take a little bit more time and try to get the angles that show the way I would see it as I'm cooking and I hope it'll be helpful to you for this show you'll need a wok or a Chinese pan this particular wok with the handles on it is great for deep frying you can see that this wok has a nice even black color which is attained from years of deep frying and stir frying. This pan can be used for stir frying, but it requires the use of an oven mitt because these handles get so hot. As a deep fryer, it's very well balanced because the handles are both the same weight and this wok will stand still and won't spill, endangering you from the hot fat. A better wok for stir frying would be a wok with a wooden handle. And as you can see, it is not as stable. It can be used for deep frying, but it's dangerous because it can slip spilling hot oil. It has a metal handle, which can be used when straining oil. The other tool that you'll need will be a spatula, which you'll notice is curved, allowing you to go around the wok in stir frying. The second, although not essential, is the ladle, which is very helpful in taking food from the wok and serving it into side dishes. With a wooden handled wok, you can eliminate the use of the ladle by simply picking up the wok and serving directly into the dishes. This ladle is also good for soup. It's good for cracking eggs. You crack an egg into there, beat it up, pour it into the wok, has a lot of uses. It's like a bowl with a handle. So it is good to have, or at least to know what it's for. The other tool you'll need will be a sharp knife and a cutting board. I prefer the Chinese cleaver because of its sharp edge. It's a heavy, well-balanced knife. It's good. It'll cut right through bones, but it's particularly good for slicing things very thin. This particular knife cost around $5 in New York City. The only problem with it is it has to be oiled and treated first, washed carefully, and it has to be dried after reach use. Because it's made out of carbon steel, it holds a very sharp edge, and it's easy to sharpen, but it does rust if it's not dried carefully after each use. I store this one, I took a little piece of wood, ran a saw blade down the edge, and then took a thin hacksaw blade and went a little bit deeper. This enables this knife to stand up although the edge of the knife is not touching the wood and won't be dulled. Welcome to Walk This Way. Today we'll be 
starting with a basic noodle dough, which is made out of flour and water. It's used for the mandarin pancakes and for several appetizers. We'll start with one and three quarters cups of flour. To that we add three quarters of a cup of boiling water. By the way, this is the authentic way of making the mandarin pancake dough. And it is very hot. As you can see the steam rising from the boiling water. You mix it with chopsticks or a wooden spoon. And you keep stirring it. It's going to be a very chewy, very stiff and sticky dough. Again, we're using boiling water and flour. Turn it out onto a cutting board. And this is the hard part of this dough. It's extremely hot. It has to be kneaded. After you get it to an even consistency, you would need it for around three minutes. Alright, we've kneaded this dough now for two or three minutes. As you can see, it's a very stiff, very hard dough. Cover it with a damp cloth and set it aside for a half hour. The modern way to make these mandarin pancakes or the dough is to use a food processor. In the food processor I have the same amount, one and three quarters cups of flour, we we'll add three quarters of a cup of boiling water. blade, set the food processor, high speed, spin it for a few seconds and we'll let it rest. Again this is a very hot boiling water with the dough, you can see the steam rising. makes for a smoother, faster dough without burning your hands. I just thought that if you want to make these noodles, you should appreciate the way it is authentically prepared. This will be set aside with a wet towel. noodle dough is been resting for approximately a half hour covered with a wet cloth. You can see the one that I made by hand is still a little tougher in consistency. A little less sticky. I think we'll leave this one just a little bit longer to cover with the wet cloth. Lightly flour the board. And we'll roll 
out the dough into a cylinder approximately 12 inches long. The first thing we're going to make today will be mandarin pancakes. And this is the same recipe that you'll use for onion cakes and rolled onion cakes. So we use one batch of dough just for that. Cut them into one inch pieces. Roll them into flour a little bit. Now with the palm of your hand, flatten all of the cakes out. If they stick, put a little bit of flour on them. Flatten them out into little individual cakes. Okay, we have all the cakes rolled out and flattened. We'll take a little bit of sesame oil and alternate. Put a drop on every other cake. Here we have ten cakes. Five of them will be covered with sesame oil. Now what the sesame oil does is when we cook them, they won't stick together. Try to get the sesame oil right out to the edges. You can use a brush, you can dip these in a bowl. Make sure you get it out to the edges so that when you put it on the other flattened cake, the edges that seal or appear to seal will actually come apart after they're cooked. All right, so we have 10 flattened cakes. Which we'll stack here for a second. bit more flour to the board. Now one method, obviously the authentic method, is to hand roll each of the cakes to approximately six inches around. You want them a little bit thicker than a crepe, yet not as thick as a flour burrito. This is just about the size and the texture that we'll need. Another way is to use a flour tortilla press. Just a little bit of flour. Place the dough in the middle of the press. and we get slightly smaller pancakes. We'll try hitting this again. I think this one here get just a little bit bigger. That's better. You can see it's a lot faster, but I don't think the dough is quite as thin when it's pressed out as when it's rolled by hand. But if you're going to make these for a party or for a large group, I'm sure you'll agree that the modern way is a lot faster. And a lot easier. If you have the time, use the rolling pin, roll them out by hand. You can see these are a little bit too large for the tortilla press. But these here, the larger ones I will use for the onion cakes, I would like them just a little bit thicker. Okay. Okay, right now that we'll use in the pot sticker dumplings later on. 
Hot stick of dumplings can be used any kind of a meat filling or vegetables. Today I'm using two hamburger patties I had in the freezer. I've added some cooked Italian sausage which we had left over. To that, I add scallions, water chestnuts, and some chopped garlic. Now I'll just show you a couple of quick tricks for chopping garlic. Starting with a clean clove of garlic, the particular piece is a little bit too round at the bottom. Just slice off just a thin slice, and that enables the garlic to lay flat. Using the blade of your cleaver, make horizontal slices in multiple layers, but not all the way through the garlic, stopping just short of the back. Then, you run vertical cuts, same way, stop before you get to the back, Then you can cut the garlic into nice little minced pieces. A faster way to mince garlic. with the end of the cleaver. This is the method that I prefer. Water chestnuts, which will be added, are sliced, then cut into julienne strips, Water chestnuts, because of their crunchy texture, will be left in a larger size. Scallions can be chopped in the same way. Cleaver it down, turn it over, and go through. Then holding the scallion. Okay, so now we have the inside of the dumplings, the stuffing. Again, it was just ground beef mixed with sausage. For liquid, I have added a little bit of sesame oil because it adds a nice smoky flavor. A couple of shots of oyster sauce, an ounce or two of light soy and dark soy. I usually use a little bit of each and then a little bit of Chinese rice wine. You can also add an egg and I added some cornstarch to this just a little bit before. The cornstarch helps keep the meat moist as it steams. Mix in these final bits of water chestnuts a little bit of liquid. You can ask, also add a little bit of chicken stock if the meat that you use is dry. I use a lot of cornstarch and I did not put an egg in this mixture because I use frozen hamburger meat, frozen beef, and it tends to draw its own water. So I would prefer a, a little bit of a drier stuffing. Back to the original dough, a little bit of flour. And again, roll it out into a cylinder. This dough will cut in half. Reserve half. I'm going to roll it out a little bit thinner than we did with the mandarin pancakes because in this recipe, you need pancakes that are about three inches in diameter, three to four inches. Again, we flatten them out, and we can use either of the methods, the 
traditional way of rolling them by hand on the floured board, which gives a nice, thin, even consistency. This dough produces a very chewy texture. And it should be thin. I will roll out a couple by hand. And we'll try the modern way. A little bit of flour in the tortilla press. See, we end up with a little bit smaller tortilla. And you can see the difference in the consistency. But after that, you've already got the round shape. Even with the tortilla press, it's easier to just roll this out and make it a little bit bigger. Look at how it Take a little bit of the stuffing. Fold them over. What we need is a beaten egg. You can use cold water for this also. The beaten egg is a very good glue for doughs of this type. Fold it over and pleat it, and we have a dumpling. One thing I've been trying, dying to use here, I bought this in a Korean grocery store the other day for two dollars and fifteen cents. William Sonoma sells it for around seven dollars. I've been kind of anxious to find out how it works. Put a little bit of dough in here. Use a little bit of filling. A little bit of egg. Dumpling. This dough, I think, is just a little bit too big. We get a nicely pleated dumpling. I think we won't even try rounding this one out. We'll put this one right in the way it is, right from the tortilla press into this dumpling press. This dough is very, very sticky. You can see I didn't brush this one with egg. This dough is so sticky that it'll take. And again, nice scalloped edges. These dumplings can be boiled, they can be steamed in a bamboo steamer, or they can be made into pot sticker dumplings, which we'll do in a few minutes. Cook up the mandarin pancakes. So you can see I've thrown one of them into the pan. It's just about done on one side. It was flipped over. It gets light brown spots. After it's done, it's placed aside to cool. And we throw another in. Again, this is just a black skillet. It's ungreased. You just put little brown spots on either side. Make it removed, and it has the brown spots on it. Carefully peel it apart. And as you can see, it's quite hot. It's moist and chewy in the middle, dry on the outside. After these cool a bit, you can stack them, put them in the freezer, and they can stay for maybe two or three months in the freezer, if they last that long. But you can just take them out, put them in a bamboo steamer, or you can place them above your rice as you're boiling the rice. If it's done after maybe 10, 15 minutes, just before the rice is done, Throw these on the top, when you turn your rice off, set it aside, let these steam on the top for a couple of minutes, even with the heat off. When they're frozen, it takes about 10 minutes. When they're fresh, it only takes a couple of minutes. What you can do with these would be to make scallion cakes. We brush the beaten egg on each side. To it, we take a little bit of chopped scallions.
press it together. For now, we'll just set it aside. Try to separate that one. Using a spatula, sometimes the ends probably didn't get enough sesame oil to keep it from sticking. As I said, they are very hot. You run the blade of the cleaver, in this case the spatula, running the spatula through, open them and separate them. Another good appetizer, or another portion of a meal, Again, we brush the inside with the beaten egg. Sprinkle some chopped scallions. made like this with that beaten egg acts as a glue and holds them together same as we have here okay as you can see we have our doughs ready to be cooked we have our pot stick of dumplings we have some reserved in the back these will be steamed in a bamboo steamer we have our rolled onion cakes and one flat onion cake made of the two mandarin pancakes which we will deep fry also. Up here, one skillet, about a half inch deep with corn oil. This is a hot skillet to which we'll add just a little bit, maybe a tablespoon of corn oil. This one will be used for the pot stick of dumplings. As it's very hot, Lay the dumplings one at a time to the bottom of the pan. Remember, this is a very sticky dough, hence the name pot stickers. I would imagine no matter how much oil you put in this pan, these will stick to the pan because of the nature of the dough. All right, these will brown nicely on the side, and then we'll get on with them. With the flat, two mandarin pancakes, which we piece together with the scallions in the middle and the eggs, to seal them, we drop that into the hot oil. On the back burner here, we have a bamboo steamer, which is full of boiling water. We'll add just a little bit of water to slow down the boiling process. And we'll take a little bit of corn oil on a piece of paper towel or a napkin and just rub a little bit on the steamer itself. You can use cheesecloth or a clean towel. I prefer to steam them right on the steamer, but you do have to have some kind of an oil to keep them from sticking to the bamboo. These pot stick of dumplings can also be boiled or they can be deep fried. A very ver versatile recipe. We'll cover these, turn it up to high. It's time to turn over our fried onion cake, which is nice and golden. Keep an eye on the hot stick of dumplings. When they get golden brown, which is just about where they are now, this is about the point we add three or four ounces of water. Cover them and reduce the heat to around medium low. Both sides are golden brown. We'll remove that to a cutting board 
we blot it with paper towels. We'll set that aside for now. Now what we'll try is take our rolled onion cakes, which are also deep fried. In this case, we have half an ounce, uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch of hot oil. By the way, these were rolled last night. They were placed in the refrigerator overnight. They can be frozen in that state and then cooked exactly like we're doing here in the frozen state. It will take a little bit longer. The pot sticker dumplings, on the other hand, they can be frozen, laid out on a tray after you roll them, stuff them, roll them out, lay them on a nice sized cookie tin or a baking tray put them in the freezer until they individually freeze. Then you just drop them into a plastic bag, leave them in the freezer, and they'll last for several weeks or as long as they stay in there. I know if I had them in the freezer, they wouldn't last too long. From a frozen state, you would throw these into the pan the same way. Brown them in the oil as they're frozen. As soon as they brown on the bottom, they add about the same amount of water because these are frozen, they will put out some, a little bit more water in that state. Four ounces would be enough. Cover them and cook them for about 20 minutes. These here should take somewhere around 10 minutes because they're raw. Coming along nicely. We'll raise the heat just a little bit. Our steamed ones coming out very well. And we just keep an eye on the rolled onion cakes. I found one little pot stick of dumpling left on the end of the board. We'll throw that in the deep fryer, just to show you how that too can be deep fried. But these onion cakes, remember they were cooked, and that they were pan fried in a dry pan, and there is no meat. So as soon as they are golden brown, they can be taken out and eaten. But the uh, pot stick of dumpling has some raw hamburger meat and it has to be thoroughly cooked. For that reason, it's usually better to steam these or to cook them in a pan in this fashion. About two more minutes and those will be ready. As you can see, almost all of the water is evaporated from our pan with the pot stick of dumplings. So they're done set them to the side. In the same amount of time, I'm sure our steamed dumplings are done. You can tell by the texture. Give them at least 15 minutes if you're using a raw stuffing, 10 minutes if it's cooked. Our pan-fried, deep-fried rather, dumpling. And here we have our rolled onion cakes, which look absolutely delicious. Just drain these on paper towels, and they'll be ready to serve. Our flat onion cake, which has been laying on the paper towel, we'll take our cleaver, and we'll cut it into pie shapes. These can be laid in the middle Platter. We take each of our rolled onion cakes and we cut them on a diagonal. And they are still hot. And place these right next to the onion cake on the tray. These are wonderful at cocktail parties. No matter how many you cook, I guarantee you don't put any away. The dough inside, because of that chewy consistency, is still moist, chewy, and tender. The outside is fried crisp, very much like an egg roll. By the way, this is not an egg roll skin. We will get into egg roll skins when we get into noodle making wonton making. We have one more. I 
think that's going to stay for the chef. And here, just to check the inside consistency, and it is completely done. The deep fried pot stick at our pot stick at dumplings are done. These we remove to a plate. As you can see, the bottom is nicely browned. The top still has that moist, chewy dough. If you've ever been to a Chinese restaurant that serves dumplings, usually they offer them fried, steamed, or boiled. These are the dumplings that are offered on the menu. It's not a wonton recipe, it has no eggs in it, just flour and water. Myself, I uh, used to enjoy steamed dumplings, I still prefer them over any other type. And I never could match the consistency at home because I used to use a noodle dough. It never seemed to be as chewy or as tasty as this dog. And the reason is that this is just flour and water. Here we have our final product. We have our steamed dumplings served in a bamboo steamer. We have our pot stick of dumplings, which are delightfully browned on the bottom, moist and tender on the top, filled with our favorite stuffing. Inside we have our diagonally cut rolled onion cakes, which we also have displayed around the outside edge of this plate, where inside we have cut pizza-shaped cuts out of the round onion cakes. All of these recipes use the mandarin pancake dough of flour and boiling water. The mandarin pancakes themselves can be used for mushu pork, mushu shrimp, or for the famous Peking duck. As I said before, any of these doughs can be frozen. If you've ever eaten in a Chinese restaurant and seen steamed dumplings, or boiled, or fried dumplings on the menu, this is the type of dough they've used. Often I've wondered why when I made my egg rolls and wonton skins and I've used them to make steamed dumplings, I could never get the consistency and the chewiness of the dough. I really hope you try it and I hope you enjoy these. Right now, I'm going to have one of these steamed dumplings. They're my favorite. Hi, I'm Bob Vila with Time Life Books. On page 38, I'll show you how to professionally install sheetrock at a fraction of the cost of hiring outside help. Here, I've penciled out my line showing the center of the stud, and I'm driving. Oh, well, no one can finish this up later. In kitchens and baths, you'll find out how to change existing plumbing fixtures and replace them with contemporary design. Decks and add-ons, you'll build the confidence to tackle your own outdoor projects, which will provide your family members with countless hours of fun. Ah! On page 96, you'll get detailed instructions on how to replace the shingles on your roof. <laughs> and if you order now, you'll get a complete supply of one year's band-aids and assorted medical supplies. Well, as you can see, you can learn everything to take care of your house from our new book series. I hope you order the books.
for now, I'm Bob Vila.